Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make a spinning organizer with a ton of storage. You may remember a while back I made an art supply organizer for my kids. And that one was mainly about organizing a bunch of different types of paper and then a few materials on top of it in little bins. Well now I need to make an organizer for myself. As I've been doing more props and more 3D printing work, I've accumulated a whole bunch of paint and all of it ends up in one of these containers. These are really hard to store, really hard to find what you need, and so now I'm gonna make something to make it a lot easier to handle all of these supplies. To do this, I don't wanna to have to buy any more material if I can avoid it, so I'm looking around and I'm gonna to try to use the scrap that I have rather than buying new material. You're gonna see some oddly shaped pieces and that's why, it's scrap. All right, let's get to it. I used three quarter inch plywood for most of this project. First, I just got rid of these weird shapes and got it down to reasonable pieces, then cut it down to four pieces, one for the top and the bottom and the two sides. As I often do, I'm kind of making this up as I go. I wanted the whole thing to be square, so I cut these pieces down to squares. But now I've decided that I actually want to put a face frame on two sides of this to hide the end of the plywood. That face frame is gonna be made out of three quarter inch material. There's gonna be two of them, so I have to cut an inch and a half off of all these pieces. I ran these over the table saw to remove that inch and a half, and then I added an edge guide to my trim router. I added a straight bit to the router and then ran it over both of the edges of the top and the bottom piece at a very low depth, and this cut a slot that was three quarters of an inch, the same thickness as the material. This allowed the side panels to slot into the bottom and the top panels on both sides. Next, I wanted to cut a slot right down the center of these two side panels, so I found the middle of them, set the table saw fence and lowered the blade, then I ran both of these pieces over. I moved the fence out just a hair and then ran both of these over again, flipping them around so that I made two passes on each piece. This made it just wide enough for the center panel to slide in. On the inside of the side panels, I made a mark on the outer edges right at the center. Along the center line, I made a lower mark and then drew some diagonals between them all. I used the router again to cut a slot along this diagonal line. The idea here is that the shelves will angle down toward the center so that I can stack bottles instead of stand them up. I can fit more in there and I won't have to worry about them falling out. I used a digital protractor to find the angle of these slots. Then I cut down some pieces to size on the table saw before setting the angle of the blade to the same angle that I found for the slots. I ran these pieces back over, giving them a bevel that fit perfectly so that the outer edge was flush. Then it was time to glue it all up, so I added some glue to one of the side panels down in all of the slots. I slid in the two shelves in the center divider and then added glue to the opposite end before pushing it in place. If you don't have a silicone brush to put on your glue, it's really handy because after the glue dries, you can pull it right off the brush and use it again next time. I use it to spread glue down in these surfaces so it gets on all three sides of any slots. Then I just pushed the whole thing together and added some clamps to hold it in place while it dried. After a couple of hours, I took off the clamps and then cut down two pieces of pegboard that I had left over to put on the side panels. These are cut to the same size as the outside. I held them in place and used some brad nails to hold them on. Then it was time to add the face frame that I mentioned earlier. I had a scrap of one by four and I cut it down to two wide pieces to fit on the sides. This covers the gap between the pegboard and the plywood. I just glued and brad nailed these in place. And once they were there, I had to cut the three pieces for the front of the shelves. They were all the same width, so I cut one piece down to the correct width and then ripped it into three strips on the table saw. Again, I used glue and brads to hold these in place and then made the same frame on the opposite side of the organizer. While I'm doing that, I need to thank the sponsor for this video, Casper. I continue to work with Casper because I honestly just love their product. I've been sleeping on a Casper mattress for like two years. All of my kids sleep on them. We love them. They mold to your body and they're super comfortable. If you want to try one out, you can sleep on it for 100 nights in your house. And if you don't like it for any reason, they will give you your money back. Come take the mattress away. You should seriously go check them out if you're looking for a mattress. They're fantastic. Go to casper.com make and use the code make and you get $50 off any mattress. Next it was time to make it spin, and I used a 12 inch Lazy Susan bearing for this. The base was 14 inches, so I measured in one inch on each side, and that helped me center the bearing within the piece of wood. These are always a little confusing for me to put on, I have to read the instructions every time, but basically you put the bearing on the base panel, mark four points, and then drill through holes on that panel. Then you center the bearing on the piece that you want to spin, and screw it in place. Right out of the package, these don't spin very well, so this is the point where you have to add some lubrication to them so that they spin nice and smooth. After that, you drive in four sheet metal screws through the through holes that you did, line them up with the holes in the bearing, and drive them together. It's not as hard as it sounds, but I do have to remember how to do it every time. 
I didn't want to waste the top of this, so I made a little bend to put on it. And to do that, I made a box with mitered corners. I set the miter saw to 45 degrees and cut one piece down that fit across one side of it. Then, once I had that as a template, I cut three more just like it. I ran these over a lowered table saw blade just like I did before to make a slot in each one of them to accept the bottom panel. But before I assembled this bin, I wanted to add a slot for a center divider. I found the center point of two of these pieces and measured 3 eighths of an inch on each side of that line. That adds up to 3 quarters of an inch, which is the same thickness as my divider. I could have used the router like I did before to cut out these slots, but I really wanted to try it with the chisel just to do the work. Unfortunately, it was across the grain and my chisels aren't great. It worked, but it was not super clean. Regardless, I ended up with two slots and it was time to assemble the whole thing. I added glue on all of the miters and then started piecing things together after sliding in the bottom panel. I love these old corner clamps, they work great for making boxes, so I put one on each corner, and unfortunately these only pull the tops together. The bottoms were still a little bit loose, so I used a strap clamp to pull them all tight. These are a little bit fiddly to put on, it kind of feels like clamping a wet noodle, but once you get them on, they add a nice even tension all the way around. With this clamped into its final shape, I measured the distance in between the two slots so that I could make the divider. I used a piece of 1x6 for this so I had a little extra height so I could add in a handle. I made marks where it was going to intersect the sides of the bin and where I wanted the top of it to be and then freehanded some curves up from the edge to that point. I took it to the bandsaw and cut one of these curves out. Using that offcut piece, I held it in the opposite corner and traced it, and this made sure that both of the curves were exactly the same. I used a Forstner bit and the drill press to drill out most of the area where the handle was going to go. I used a jigsaw to finish that up, connecting the two outer circles. With a roundover bit in my router table, I ran over both sides of the handle to smooth out the area that you would hold. I could have done the same on the top, but instead I just flattened it out and smoothed out the edges with a belt sander. I kept the bin in the clamps so that the sides would hold together, I added glue to the slots, and then knocked down the center divider into place. It was a pretty tight fit, which is a good thing, and by having it still in the clamps, it made sure everything held in place while that glue dried. The bottom panel for this bin was offset from the bottom edge by about an eighth of an inch. On the top of the organizer, I used a three quarter inch spacer against the outer edge and glued in a strip. The strips were made of eighth inch plywood and were just enough so that the bin could sit down on them and lock into place without sliding off the edge. I ran over the whole thing with 220 grit on my orbital sander, mainly just to smooth off the edges and the corners. I wiped off all the dust and then took it out and put a couple of coats of spray lacquer on it. Spray lacquer is not a super heavy duty finish, but if you just need a little bit of protection, it's great, fast, and cheap. Then it was time to fill the whole thing up. It'll take some reorganizing, but I was really happy to see how much stuff I could fit in this thing. So there it is, it's a ton of storage, and one of the coolest things is that it brought supplies from all over the shop and even in the office all into one container. It's pretty modular and open-ended, so I'll probably end up changing where stuff is as I use it more and decide what needs to actually be here and what doesn't. Another great thing about having it spin as well is that I can put it in a corner or up against a wall, and I don't necessarily have to have access to all four sides. As long as I have enough room for it to spin, I can get to what I need. Being able to take the top off is not absolutely necessary, I don't really have very far to go, but it is really handy. If you didn't need to take it off, you could easily just make a container that's stuck on top and just stayed in place. It's just a wasted storage space if you don't take advantage of the top. Now the one big problem I have is that I don't know where I'm going to put this. I'll figure that out, but it is going to be really handy just to have everything in one place. I'd love to know what you think about this project. You can let me know down in the comments. And as always, I have a list in the description of all the tools and all the supplies that I use to make these projects. They're always there, so if you're interested in something, be sure to go down there and check it out. I've got lots of other videos that you may be interested in of all different types. Don't forget to subscribe to my main channel and my second channel, and hit the bell down there so you always get notified when I upload a video. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.